Jurassophobia. Jurassophobia is a fear of getting older. They say that people who suffer from Jurassophobia have an undue anxiety when it comes to getting older. They worry about such things as their changing appearance and their possible loss of independence as they age. Now, I admit I, I don't know anything about phobias. Uh, but I do think that we all have some questions about what is it, what happens as we get older. Is it all gloom and doom? Is it really all downhill from here? Is our age really a liability? We know we live in a youth-centered culture, right? It was our generation, my generation, the baby boomer generation. We started the mantra, don't trust anyone over 30. Remember that? <laughs> now, I don't know how the hell this happened, but all of a sudden, all my kids are over 30. <laughs> and yet it's that Pepsi generation that we, that's the generation that we need to belong to in order to uh, have a satisfaction of life, to be happy, to be, have adventure. Because they tell us if we don't belong to that generation, we simply will not be happy. We must look young, we must act young. We must hide the gray, get rid of the wrinkles. And because we are a very, very, very forgetful generation, they remind us over and over and over again not to forget to ask our doctor about Viagra. <laughs> but I ask you this, is there really anything good about getting older? How about this? Let me make this perfectly clear. Read my lips. Age is an asset. Age is like a diamond. With all its imperfections and all its flaws, and a diamond remains the strongest element on the periodic table. Diamonds are billions of years old. And then they rise to the occasion. Under pressure, they spew to the Earth's surface. And that's when they're treasured. That's when their value is shown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you four diamonds as to why age is an asset. First diamond, age broadens our intelligence. If you're playing with your smartphone, you're probably saying, what is this lady talking about? But age really does broaden our intelligence. In 1960, a guy by the name of Raymond Cattell, a British psychologist, he coined the term crystallized intelligence. Crystallized intelligence is the intelligence that we gain from our life experience. And we develop this warehouse of knowledge and from that warehouse of knowledge, we are able to make, draw better conclusions and then make better decisions. You remember the expression, um, I wish I knew then what I know now? I think we've all said that. That's crystallized intelligence. About mm, 25 years ago, maybe more than 25 years ago, my son was sitting at the kitchen table crying his eyes out. His first summer love moved away. And he was just crying and crying. Remember those mothers and fathers? Crying and crying. And I said, you know, what's the matter? And he said, and I quote, Mom, you wouldn't understand. This is the hardest thing I've ever been through. Now, I wanted to laugh, but I didn't laugh because I really did understand. Up until that point in time, that really was the hardest thing the kid had ever been through. He didn't have that warehouse of experience. It's that warehouse of experience that teaches us how to deal with life, how to deal with conflict. In 2010, the University of Michigan did a study. Uh, they gave out Dear Abby letters to multiple generations. And they ask the multiple generations to respond to the letters. How would you respond to these 
Abby, Dear Abby letters. And what they found was those who are over the age of 60 imagined different points of views, offered multiple resolutions, and see different ways to compromise. Those over 60 were more skilled than any of the other previous generations that came before, after them at offering those alternatives. That's because of crystallized intelligence. Now let me give you the second diamond. The second diamond is age broadens our, I'm sorry, age betters our personality. We mature as we get older. Call it the maturity principle. But what it says is that we are better able to deal with the ups and the downs of life. We start to think of and, and rid ourselves of that negative angst. That decreases. And emotional positiveness increases. We develop a sense of wholeness as we get older. We focus less on ourselves and more on others. Those over the age of 65 years old, a quarter of that population volunteers on average about 100 hours a year. A few months ago, I was, sweet, I was speaking at a uh, volunteer luncheon at one of the healthcare systems locally. And there were about mm, 220 or so senior volunteers in the room. And those 220 plus senior volunteers in that room donated over 50,000 hours of volunteer time. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And as we, as we age and we look to the generations after us, we look to our legacy. Let me show you this picture. You can only guess they have to be grandparents, right? You see those smiles? Those are called Dushian smiles. They are full smiles. And although we get them from many other sources, this is a classic example of when you can get that Dushian smile. Let me tell you about the third diamond. The third diamond is that age increases our satisfaction of life. Now, as we age, there are certain categories they track. And in a Gallup survey, they looked at social, community, financial, and physical positive responses. And you can see that those over the age of 65 offered the highest positive responses when it came to those four categories. Now, there's one category that's not there, and that's sexual satisfaction. Now, if there's children in the room, you may not want to hear this, but people who age actually do continue to have sexual and intimate relationships. And they continue to enjoy them. Their self-perception increases. And we, fe and we feel more comfortable in our skin. And that's definitely a reason to smile. And it's a good thing we smile. Because in a couple of years ago, in 2009, I believe it was, they did a study, Wayne State University did a study, a smile intensity study of baseball card photographs from the 1952 baseball season. And they measured the study, they measured the smiles of baseball players. No, partial, and full. And you will see that those who offered a full smile lived seven years longer on average. So there, there's a good reason for you to smile. Fourth diamond, age teaches us the value of time. Time, our most precious commodity. As we age, we learn, we know, we become fully aware that time is not limitless. So we have to use it. We have to use it to the best of our ability. 
There are people who go out and, do, and have adventure, mentor, do a variety of things. Jeff, at the age of 23, he started to run marathons. At the age of 63, he continues to run marathons, and now ultra marathons. That's 100 miles for those people who don't know what an ultra marathon is, because I didn't. And time, we start to realize that we need to use our time as productively as we can. Maybe even to do something that we never even thought to do before. Maybe something that, to take a risk. A risk that just simply never crossed our mind until somebody invites you to do it. And then you say, hey, what the heck? Like join a pageant. Or how about Charles at the age of 64? He returns to his first love, baseball, hardball, playing with the 28-year-olds. And there are other people out there all over maximizing this use of time, mentoring and inventing and creating. And did you know that there is a group of new entrepreneurs called Encore Entrepreneurs. Encore Entrepreneurs are those in the 55 to 65 year old. And they are one of the fastest growing segments of the new entrepreneurs. And not only that, they comprise over a quarter of them, of all new businesses. It's an extraordinary concept. And others are using their time to explore. See this guy, Paul? Paul and his wife, Kate. They're in their 80s now. And for the last 20 years, every winter, they pack up that Volkswagen van and they head south. They head south to visit the national parks. And they head south to visit old friends and just to explore and to have another adventure. And they're not the only ones exploring the, our national parks. The National Park Service says that each year they sell over a half a million, over 500,000 senior passes annually. That's a lot of people out there, a lot of Pauls and Kates. And then there's this woman, Nola Oaks. I don't know if you've heard of her. But Nola, at the age of 95, decided, well, it's time. Time to go back to school. And she graduated with her bachelor's degree. But Nola didn't stop there. At the age of 98, she earned her master's degree. Nola didn't stop there. Nola went on to be a teaching graduate assistant. Nola didn't stop there. At the age of 100, she started on her first book. Noah has a great quote here. She says, I don't dwell on my age. It might limit what I can do. <laughs> I think Noah really gets it. I think Noah really understands that age is an asset. Age broadens our intelligence. Age betters our personality. Age increases our satisfaction of life. And of course, age teaches us the value of time. I want to leave you with just a couple of statistics and a, a couple of last thoughts. At this current moment in the United States, one third of the population, over 109 million people, are currently over the age of 50. That has never, ever, ever happened before. It's a phenomenon. Here's another phenomenon. Each day in this country, 10,000 people a day turn 65 years old. That's every single day. And that is going to continue to happen for about the next 90, 19 years. So we must realize that age is an asset, that age is like a diamond. 
It is something to be valued and something to be treasured, to, our, to be able to see and to be able to really appreciate it, to choose to see it that way, to see our gray hair as a badge of honor, not to be feared, but to be valued. Wayne Dyer says, if we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. I have to agree with that. Because it's then, and only then, that we will all realize, all generations know, that age is an asset. Thank you. <laughs>